In this video, we will discuss the functions of dendritic cell. We'll discuss how dendritic cell gets activated by bacteria, fungus, and worms. What is the cellular signaling mechanism? How dendritic cell activates the helper T cells? In detail, we're going to discuss all these important steps one by one. I hope this video is going to help you to understand the function as well as the signaling of dendritic cell. In this video, we will also discuss how toll-like receptors, they are involved in activating the dendritic cell. We'll discuss how bacteria activates dendritic cell via toll-like receptor 4 and toll-like receptor 5. We'll also discuss that how dendritic cell gets activated by viruses. There are different steps, there are different mechanisms that are involved. So I hope this video is going to help you to understand all the signaling mechanisms. Before we move on to the lecture part, I have a quick request to make. If you are new to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, then press the like button. All right, without any delay, let's start the lecture. Today, our topic of discussion is cell signaling via dendritic cell. We're going to discuss how different types of pathogenic molecules, they activate the dendritic cell. So for that, first I need to design a dendritic cell. So here you're seeing the outline of our dendritic cell. And using this outline, I will explain how the signaling, the dendritic cell signaling works. Let me design a nucleus in the center because all the signaling pathway they basically are directed via nucleus. So let's first start with the bacterial cell. Suppose the pathogenic organism is bacteria, one bacterial cell, and bacteria usually interacts with the toll like receptors. And different ligands activate different toll like receptors. In this case, I'm explaining toll-like receptor 4, toll-like receptor 5 as the ligand for the bacterial antigens and via nucleus, there will be cellular signaling and the output of that signaling will be in the form of cytokines. And in this case, we'll have IL-12, interleukin-12 cytokine, very important cytokine. The second pathway where we have virus as the pathogenic entity and virus will be detected by the toll like receptors 3, 7 and 9. You need to remember that. And via nucleus you will have the cellular signaling in the form of interleukin 12 as well as MSC molecules. So MSC molecules they're going to process the virus antigenic part and then activate the other cell types like naive T cells. Here I'm trying to show you the activation of the naive T cell. And this is the naive T cell. So I'm going to write N in this case. And after interacting with the dendritic cell, the naive cell is going to differentiate into the Th1 subtype, further releasing the interferon gamma. And interferon gamma is highly important in case of the antiviral immune response. So this is the signaling pathway of the bacterial antigenic molecules. Now let's move on to the fungal antigens. For detecting or to detect the fungal antigen, we have dactin receptor on the surface of the DC, dendritic cell. So this is the dactin receptor and wired nucleus signaling pathway you will get the production of interleukin 6 and interleukin 23. So interleukin 6 and 23 will be released plus the dendritic cell is going to present the, the antigenic parts using the MSC surface receptors to the naive T cell and then, then further the naive T cell is going to differentiate into TH17 subset by causing the production of interleukin 17. They are also known as regulatory T cells. 
Now let's move on to the third pathogenic molecule or pathogenic organism, in this case helminths, and they are going to be detected by toll like receptor 2 and 6. Now again, via the, the cellular signaling pathway, we'll have the production of interleukin-10 and TGF-beta. The antigenic molecules from these worms, they are also going to be presented by MSC receptors to the naive T cell and further the naive T cell is going to be differentiated into TS2 subtypes, causing the production of interleukin-4, interleukin-5, interleukin-13. So this is the detailed pathway of the activation of dendritic cell via bacteria, fungi, and helminths, basically the worms, parasitic worms. And dendritic cell is an important part of the innate immune system. So you can see how dendritic cell is interacting with the pathogenic molecules and then further activating the important immune system signaling pathways and also activating the naive T cells. So this topic is an important topic in the immune system. So I hope now this topic is clear and you know the function of dendritic cell, you know the signaling mechanism of the dendritic cell. I hope this video lecture was helpful for you to understand the signaling of dendritic cell and its mechanism to activate the helper T cells. If you like the video, then please do hit the like button. And if you like the content of the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.